So uh, maybe we can uh, switch gears a little bit uh, and talk about um, patients who come into us. Uh, often they're referred to us because they have cytopenias. What are your thresholds, Jamil, for uh, blood product transfusions with patients? I mean, um, so there's, there are institutional guidelines, and um, anybody who has a hemoglobin below 7 um, will receive a transfusion, though, again, having a cutoff for older individuals or even younger that may be frequently transfusion-dependent probably will vary. So I base it outside of that on symptomatic anemia. So I have younger individuals that tolerate hemoglobin of seven, uh, six that is, sorry. And so they may not get a transfusion unless it's below that. And some older individuals who are symptomatic at hemoglobin of eight, so that, that would be where they would get it. So your institutional threshold even for outpatients is a hemoglobin of seven. seven. And what about for platelets? 10, 10 or 15 if febrile. So anything uh, below 10, they will get an automatic transfusion. And if they have a fever, then it's 15. Of course, if they're bleeding, they'll get transfused irrespective of the platelet count. But How generous. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and what about at your institution? What's the threshold for um, outpatient? Um, um, similar, like usually if patients are asymptomatic, don't have comorbidities, we could go down to like a hemoglobin of seven even. Uh, many of those patients, as you alluded earlier, are older, have comorbidities, so they really feel the difference when they are below eight. So most of patients, I would say, practically the threshold had been eight to transfuse. Uh, there is a push sometimes to try to do the one unit transfusions nowadays rather than the two units. Uh, for me, it's just a matter of frequency it becomes. And some of those MDS patients, sometimes if you give them two units, you'll give them a break of coming to the clinic the next week again. So I try to push for two units transfusion in those patients. Uh, platelets similar, bleeding below 10, you know, uh, so it, it's very similar pattern, but like, yeah, like I think that the hemoglobin really is very variable between patients and like I learn to ask patients and sometimes it's important to ask the patients how much better they feel after blood. Some patients will tell you they feel amazing and some patients say it doesn't make any difference for them. And then I say like, then, then there's no point of us yeah. keep just chasing numbers. So, so, um, so just to keep track, Jamil says seven for hemoglobin is it gets a transfusion as an outpatient. Rami says eight for the most part. What about you, Alan? So you're always faced with institutional pressures and you're faced with a patient that's right in front of you. So institutionally, they would prefer I not, I not uh, transfuse anyone who has a hemoglobin over seven or anyone who has platelets over 10 and they prefer that I give one unit. But the patient in front of you often is, it's very different. So those patients with cardiac disease or pulmonary disease they cannot, they cannot have any quality of life, you know, with a hemoglobin that is below eight. So those patients, I will transfuse and I will, you know, fight the institution on, on, on that particular number. Similarly, if I know a patient is uh, transfusion dependent and they come to me on a Thursday with a platelet count of 12, and I'm not going to see them again until, you know, next, you know, week, you know, I'm going to transfuse that patient because I don't think that they're going to be able to make it to the, to the next appointment. Yeah. I agree with you. It's so much nicer in a patient who you know is transfusion dependent to be able to give them two units, to give them a break from having to come to see you the next week. But, you know, you're always working with the institutional pressures to try and do the best thing for your patient. It's, it's interesting. So at our institution, it's eight as an outpatient. And the reason is that the studies showing that patients could be transfused at a hemoglobin of seven were conducted in intensive care units uh -huh. where people weren't up and moving around. And uh -huh. having to care for a spouse is also sick. Uh -huh. So we tend to be a little bit more aggressive as an outpatient and, and transfuse at eight. We do give one unit of blood, and that comes from the Ch Choosing Wisely campaign from uh -huh. the ABIM. And it's a, actually a wonderful campaign to call out some of the practices that we do that don't make a lot of sense. But like you said, the Choosing Wisely campaign, looking at blood transfusions, isn't necessarily thinking about the person with MDS who has to fight the traffic to get into Chicago or Cleveland or New York or Tampa <laughs> to come and get a transfusion and, and really would appreciate an, an extra week or two break from having to brave that traffic, valet park, check in, get a blood draw, and wait to see us. Mm -hmm. And spend all day, let's not, uh, let's not, you know, belittle that, all day okay. getting the transfusion. By the time you leave your house and you get there, you get your type, the blood is available for you, there's a chair for you to be transfused, you get transfused, and you're finished, 
that can be the same as like going to work for a long day. So right. you know, it's 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 really important to keep in mind what that commitment is for the patient.